Keller Williams, uh, was there for a couple of years, um, and then uh, transferred recently over to, to Remax, uh, which is a, another firm over here, so. Okay. All right, good deal. So, all right, let's um, let's let's jump straight into it. So, what would you what would you say your experience is with with flipping? Um, you know, around about how many deals have you done? Um, how often do you represent investors that are doing yeah. flips? Kind of quick and dirty there. Yeah, no doubt. So, I, I would honestly say a good ninety percent of my clientele are actually investors uh, across the board, whether they're flipping or they're they're buying and holding. So, they're buying a property and keeping it for the rental portfolio. Um, uh, early on, my first deal was actually with an investor. It's funny how that how that relationship came to be. Actually, I was showing one of his listings, and he walked in on me, um, and it was just regular conversation. Um, and then, in a roundabout way, he was kind of testing me, kind of see how I knew the market and so on and so forth. Mind you, I was fresh in. I might have been maybe three weeks with my license, um, and he's kind of testing me a roundabout way. Hour and a half later, next thing you know, um, you know, he's telling, yeah, this is actually my my property that you're that you're showing right now, and that led to you know a series of other other investments. So it, it's just been one of those moments where it, it, it extremely serendipitous as far as like how it led into that. Um, yeah, I think I think in investing uh, investors that, that I work with specifically, um, like I said, going back uh, as far as like the like what they're looking for in in, in certain things. Um, uh, we're down here in the Hampton Roads area. Um, which we're going to say later on as far as the marketplace here, but it's, it's, um, it's the market is changing, uh, pretty fast right now, but, um, yeah, yeah but we'll, we'll get into the details of that as okay. we move forward. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. So sounds like just kind of, kind of happened throughout relationships. And I think, um, I think that's it. That's important to say because it, a lot of people say, you know, I can't find a deal or, you know, I, I don't know where to get started. And, and really a great pay, place to get started is just to talk to people and say, this is what I'm doing, right? So if we're having this conversation now, everybody that's listening understands that we're interested in real estate investing. So that just organically starts to spread where you might be getting deals from. So if we're having this conversation now and somebody listening is saying, oh, well, I'm, I'm thinking about selling my house or I know somebody that has a house that needs work, you know, you're kind of already bridging the gap because you're talking about it. So I think it's important to just have the conversation, talk to people so people understand more so of what you're trying to do rather than trying to do everything yourself. And I think that's a, you hit it on the head. Like when you put things in the atmosphere, I, I promise you it, it really comes to fruition. Like even even to the point where that's how we found our first um, our person finance our deals actually put it out there in the atmosphere. Uh, the person we're working with right now, uh, the guy we met at the gym, my, my business partner, he was in the gym, works out in the YMCA, um, just started vocalizing how he's looking for different deals, uh, kind of his pain points, it actually led from his pain points. So I, I'm having a hard, hard, hard time finding these deals. Next thing you know, he gets a tap on the shoulder and said, hey, you know, let's sit down and have a conversation. Not knowing that this person was, was well established and was looking for another stream of income. But if he didn't have those conversations and wasn't vocal about it, didn't put it out there in the atmosphere, there's no way it would have been, you know, in the situation that we're in right now. Yeah. So let, let me go back. And I, I apologize. You asked me a question like, as, as far as uh, how many deals we've, we've done and kind of my experience with investing. So I, I'll start from the beginning. So the, um, I've, I've been in a position to where I consulted a lot of deals. Um, like I said, early on, I was working with a lot of investors. Uh, and then what I started to notice is that when I would, you know, give them different, my, my two cents on different things, uh, it would, the, the value of the home would go up. Uh, I know my, remember my first listing, uh, one of the agents that had it prior to me taking over, I won't say his name, one of, one of the big dogs in Norfolk, like his, he's always in the papers and so on and so forth. Dope realtor. I'm not saying anything against him. He's a, he's a dope realtor where I took over his listing, okay, going back to that story as far as me showing that property, unbeknownst to me, the person that walked in was the owner, the, the, the developer. Well, it was on the market for a long time, never sold. I took over and then I, I told him, you know, I gave him my, my suggestions on, hey, you know, I will maybe change the color scheme here. I'll stage it, I'll open up this wall. Next thing you know, within three weeks of me taking over that listing, we had, we had an offer. So that's when I caught the bug of, man, I'm helping out a lot of developers like really, you know, deal with their wealth, really, right? Making a lot of money on, on things that I'm telling them to do. And then that's one of the things kind of matured into, into where we are now. So over the last two and a half, we flipped uh, five so far. And we're current, 
it, it, it's been dope. It's been dope. And we're, we're currently looking for another one now, but it's, yeah. it's pretty, it's tough right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. Understood. So um, when you when you mentioned kind of, you know, walking through the properties, I, I'm not sure if I've told you this before, but like just the way you walk through properties, even on Instagram, just sets you apart because you're walking oh, in there and I'm not maybe because I'm looking at it from an, an, an investor standpoint, but I'm not, you know, I, I can see the kitchen like I can see how nice the kitchen is just by the video. But, um, you know, when you're walking in the crib, you're talking about locations, you're talking about bedroom, bathroom count, you're talking about, you know, the quality of the finishes, you're talking about the floor layout, you're talking about um, the, the flexibility of the home, how you can make this area work for this area and, and, and this area do this and, you know, down to the laundry rooms, how you can multi-purpose it and all that. So I think just the way you walk through properties and the, how you're just giving people gems as you're going through the property for, for things they should be looking at and things they should understand, I think really sets you apart from other realtors that I've seen um, that are just kind of saying, oh, it's a beautiful kitchen or, oh, it's a nice bathroom. You're really given like what, what this nice kitchen or nice bathroom or what this extra bedroom or what this square footage means. That, hey, that's love. I appreciate that. That's love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's love. But, but so, all right, let's, um, let's, let's roll into kind of the process of flipping a property. So when say I'm, I'm just getting started and invest mm -hmm. in it, I'm, I'm looking at doing a flip. What's yeah. kind of the first steps? What are the first things I should do to, to start getting successful and getting prepared to do my first flip? I think the biggest thing, you know, we, we always talk about like financing, right? One, one of the things is, you know, do we, do we find a property first or do we, do we secure the financing? I'm, I'm always a big fan of getting, figuring out what your financing looks like, right? Uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that here, but I, I say you know, off the bat, you know, figure out how you want to finance these deals. Uh, and then once we have that settled down, which is probably one of the hardest things to do, then you start looking at location, of course. Uh, if, if anyone knows real estate, whether you're licensed or not, or you just, watch HGTV, you know, location is key. So if you could go into a place and looking at it from that standpoint, as far as I know the potential of this, this neighborhood. Um, and then that's, that's what really adds a lot of value. And, and I, I add this too, don't go into a neighborhood that is, um, you know, kind of, kind of thinking about the, the, the right term to say, because there's a, there's a proper way to look for a neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to go into something where, uh, everything is, is fully established already. Um, uh, you, you want to go somewhere there's potential, right? You see it in your surrounding areas. You see like a couple of new constructions going on because you see a couple of flips going on and so on and so forth. Cause that's still opportunity mm -hmm. for you to actually get into a, pro a property uh, and get at a discounted rate. Um, one of the things that we've been researching uh, heavy on right now is um, the, and you and I were talking about this opportunity zones. So mm -hmm. I, I can't speak to every other, other markets, but here in Hampton roads, you have what they call the opportunity zones and you can go to, to any city.gov and look at the city plans and it has it listed um, like verbatim listed for the, the top areas. So that's another way you could look at, Hey, where am I going to be kind of, you know, hyper focused when it comes to the properties that I want to, I want to investigate. Yeah. Um, financing location, um, of course, getting a, a, a solid team, um, I, I learned the hard way, man. I, I've been burned, you know, and yeah. you know the story. I've been burned bad. Um, make sure you get a solid team around you and that's across the board. Make sure you get, um, if you're not licensed, make sure you get an agent that understands what you're trying to accomplish um, and don't chase anything. And I, and I say that because there's been a lot of agents where they're just looking for the top dollar when it comes to your entry point. Um, but I'm, I'm always like, nah, man, we, we got to get us at a discounted rate. I don't, I don't care, you know, how, how thin my pocket is going to be at the end of this. I want to make sure that you're successful in this. Thanks. Um, uh, doing that, uh, contractors, make sure you have a contract that you trust, make sure they're properly vetted, uh, make sure they're able to pull permits. Uh, it's just about the team. So I, if I had to, you know, sum it up in three different things prior to going to a flip, make sure you get your financing in order, make sure you have a solid team around you, contractors, real estate agent, um, and then of course, location, make sure you get in a location that it's going to be some value there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So with, um, with location, I, I think that's especially important because usually when I'm talking to somebody that's saying, I'm, I'm trying to look for deals. The first thing yeah. I say is, uh, focus on a concentrated area, right? right? It's, it's much harder to 
understand what a good deal looks like if you're looking in Virginia, North Carolina, New York, yeah. and California, right? But if you say, all right, I'm looking in Norfolk, yep. I'm comfortable with a three bedroom, one and a half, two and a half bedroom type of deal. Um, according to the financing that I've set up, I know I've, you know, I've gotten pre-approved for yep. a, a conventional loan or a rehab loan or a hard money loan. I know that I can afford uh, uh, one hundred and fifty thousand to two hundred thousand dollar project, yeah. right? So now I know where I'm going. So the city, I know what price point I'm looking at. Um, I know what bedroom and bathroom count, and then you can also include things like how comfortable am I with the year the house was built. Some yeah. people say I don't want a house that was built pre nineteen fifty because mm -hmm. the electrical is going to be different, the plumbing is going to be different. There's probably a lot of work that's going to have to be done on yeah. an older home if nobody's touched that home. Um, so the more you, um, the more you narrow your your um, your your target. Mm -hmm. the more you're going to be able to understand how good of a deal that is. So if you've looked at every three bedroom, two bathroom house in Norfolk, that's a hundred or 1500 square feet and higher that's built in 1950 or later. If you've looked at all those properties, when another one comes on the market, you know, you can compare them against similar properties and say, boom, this is the right one. It, it makes sense. Exactly. Off the bat, you got your specifications, you got your, your criteria for what you want to do. As soon as it comes in, yeah, no, you, that's a solid point. Then you, you know, this fits into my, my template on what I want to do. And then yeah. from there, it's, it's, yeah, it's a no-brainer. As long as long as that entry point, and I put emphasis on that because, you know, a lot of times that, you know, with especially how the market is now, man, golly, like everything is going to best and final. Like even, even my clients that aren't investors, they're just, they're just buying properties, you know, for their family. Like just a, tr you know, traditional, hey, just, just me and my kids, you know, we're going to be right. in the next 20 years. <laughs> Yo, like even then, everything is best and final right now, man. So when, when yeah. I say best and final is you put something on the market right now and then um, you get an email from the agent saying, hey, there's a lot of volume coming in. You got a lot of traffic. So I need you by tomorrow at 12 noon, give us your, your best foot forward like, and basically more money or, or better terms, right? Yeah. So it, when I say better terms, it might be, you know, we might keep our purchase price, but we could close earlier or, hey, we're buying it as is, whatever the case is. And it's, it's crazy right now, man. It's crazy. So I, I, I would say, you know, don't, don't chase it. Like, you know, keep, you have a benchmark, you have a template that you are going to stick with. Not only the three twos that we're talking about, three bedroom, two bath, but also your entry point as far as like how much you're willing to pay for that property. Yeah. Don't, don't chase any deals, man. Do yeah. not chase any deals. Yeah. Understood. Understood. All right. So you mentioned financing. So I, I yeah. think, there's a couple big things that, that um, stop people from getting into real estate. Right, so right. I would say one, and one of the biggest ones is, is financing, or I don't have the money. Two is I don't have the time. And three is really, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's talk about the money or the financing. So I would say first, maybe let's do this two ways. Okay. First, what are some ways that people that don't have as much money may be able to get into the game because I know personally I don't have one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash to yeah, write, to buy something and then put fifty thousand dollars into right. it. So how to how can people that don't have you know one hundred thousand dollars sitting in the bank how do they get into it and yeah. then what's kind of the route that you used on your flips? Yeah, so I'll I'll, I'll get into what we did uh, towards the end of that conversation, but I'll speak to some things that you can do now. Um, of course, I'm big on JVs, joint ventures. So you have a, a, a group of friends. And I, I say this because we're in a, in a very um, fortunate situation where we have a lot of friends uh, who have just been really savvy when it comes to money. And everyone now, especially us, people that look like us, are kind of like, now I need to start building a generation of wealth. So they've been putting a lot of money you know, aside. So I would say, you know, kind of go to your friends and family and say, hey, what can we do together? Let's put our money together. Um, I, I'm not gonna put a dollar amount on it because I don't know what marketplace that you're in. But you know, even if you have you know a, a group of five, ten friends that say, "Hey, let's put five thousand together. That's fifty thousand dollars cash." I mean, you got buying power now, right? You yeah. might not be able to finance the entire deal, but at least you could have a down payment on it, finance some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, repairs going forward, right? So yeah. I look at joint ventures. You know, a group of friends getting together, putting the money together. Um, I look at anywhere you have funds. I look at 401ks. Uh, I don't know anyone that subscribes to the Dave Ramsey plan. 
Like, that's you know, I, I get it. But four hundred one k, if I if I feel as though that my return is going to be greater than what my four hundred one k has been performing over the last year, I'm pulling from it. Just to be honest with you. Um, and then now we get into the what you what everyone is, is probably familiar with: um, hard money loans, and then and private investors, private loans. Uh, and then we might even like, now even mention business credit. I'll, I'll do that last though, because I'm still still trying to get my bearings right about that. But your but your hard money lenders are basically people who um, think of an, an institute, right? Um, I'm thinking about a, a guy up in, in Richmond, and the way he has his outfit is he's actually an accountant. He's an accountant, so what he does is one of the things that he offers for some of his, his you know his top percenters, uh, he'll say, hey, you know what? I'm I will diversify you know some of the funds that you have coming through here through some real estate deals, and that's what he does. So he takes a lot of those funds, and then he outsources it out to uh, to people like us, developers. Who are trying to flip. So um, the, the the core difference, and well, let me explain private money, and then I, I compare the two between hard money and, and, and private money. So private money is kind of what we're doing right now. So uh, as I stated earlier, uh, my business partner knew a guy, met him in the gym, very successful. Um, he's our, our our private lender. Private lender uh, in the sense of uh, his fees aren't outrageous. That's the core difference between a hard money lender. Um, and a private lender for private investor, hard money is you're, you're paying money into that. Uh, and I, I kind of break down the process whenever using a hard money lender. So, um, hard money typically you're, you're paying for your own closing costs when you see a property, right? They'll give you the cash, they'll give you cash in order to uh, purchase the home, right? But then also on the back end, when you're paying your closing costs, typically you're paying for that, okay? Uh, whenever you secure the property, now you're getting into the development of the property, they do a, uh, a withdrawal fee. fee. So anytime that you go to them and you're asking for more money, you're paying a fee on it. It costs to play. You're paying a fee on there. And that on, not only that, you have to, it's a reimbursement uh, a program. This is not all of them, but it's a good 80% of them. Um, it's, it's a reimbursement program. So basically, I, I fit the bill for the first week. And then they come out there, either you could take pictures and send it to them, say, hey, you know, we finished our, our demo uh, this week. All right, cool. Send me a picture. I want to see how much you guys accomplished. All right, cool. And they'll reimburse you, right? Or they'll send someone out there to make sure you did it, you know, right. Um, and then, but if you don't, you're not getting that money. You're not getting that money back. So you have to be, you have to make sure that you're on your P's and Q's when it comes to that. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, successfully going down the list and then, um, uh, say, I don't know, week five, you know, you're preparing to, to sell your property. Um, when after you sell it, now they're still taking a cut from what you were able to gain on it, right? So they're taking I, the, 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 the last term sheets that I saw, I got a buddy in Baltimore about a flip. The last term sheets I saw was about 10%. So at the end of it, um, you know, he, he's paying another fee, additional fee of 10% based on the monies that he borrowed. So purchase price and also the rehab, but he's also paying the 10%. Uh, fee on that for the for the hard money lender. Um, uh, does that make sense? I want to make sure I'm, I'm breaking that down. Recording. Yeah, yeah. Is so the ten percent is that um is that like a down payment type of thing or is that just an, an extra fee at the end of the that's at, a fee. The the that's, that's, mm. that's what it costs to pay yeah, pay the bills. That's what it costs <laughs> to pay. Yeah, that's a fee. And all hard money lenders are completely different. They're completely mm. different. In fact, there's there's some that advertise. Hey, you don't have um. What's the big one that is on Facebook all the time? Um, do do it hard, do it hard money or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they have one where they, they advertise, you know, hey, we don't um, pay any fees when you draw money. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just 10%. Like everyone is different. Like the game yeah. is so different now because of COVID. It's completely different. Yeah. But what I gave you is a template of how I, I guarantee 85% of them work like that where you're paying fees every time you touch the money, you're paying fees every transaction, uh, buying the property, you're paying a fee, closing costs, and then when you're selling a property, you're paying a fee uh, for, for whatever money's out there uh, they're taking from it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so um, just, uh, just to put some, some dollars on it, so say I, say I find a property that needs some work, I negotiate the deal with the seller, um, let's say I think it's worth 150000 I negotiate it like the floor is all messed up, needs a new HVAC, roof is messed up, tenant trashed it, holes in the walls, maybe got a leak in the ceiling. So I negotiate it down to 50,000. Yeah. So I get to buy the property for 50,000. I say we need to put 50,000 into the property. Right. So 50,000 to buy, 
fifty thousand put in work, so right. we've invested a hundred thousand dollars in the deal. Right. I would go to a hard money lender and say, I have ABC Street under contract for fifty thousand right. dollars. I need fifty thousand in rehab. The hard money lender will say, I'll give you the hundred thousand dollars. You give me a down payment on that hundred thousand. So say the down payment is twenty percent. Okay. You'll give them twenty thousand dollars. They'll give you the money to purchase and rehab the property. And mm -hmm. the amount that they, like you said, that you put down really depends on the hard money lender. Right. Um, so one of the ones I worked with said, if you have uh, two deals or less, it's 20%. If you have two or three deals or three or four deals, uh, it's 15%. If you have five or more deals, then it's 10% down. Right. And you can finesse that in different ways. Right. If I want to yeah. go in all by myself and I've only done one deal, then I'm paying 20%. But mm -hmm. if I've done one deal and I know you've done five, I can say, Hey, hey Pat, come, come in with on the deal with me. You yeah. know, you, you put 5,000 on a deal just so everything's copacetic. And then I can get the 10% down payment, which saves me $10,000. And I can say, all right, I'll give you a thousand dollars just for putting your name on the deal. So yeah. I can get the lower, the lower entry cost. That, that's a good way to in, in definitely contextualize it by putting the numbers to it. But you, you, you hit something on the head too. And I, I like this conversation because dealing with the hard money. Um, a lot of times too, though, it's not about you having the money, right? It's, sometimes it's, it's all, hey, baby girl. Sometimes it's about the um, uh, experience. So the first yeah. time we try to go to the, the person I was specifically talking about in Richmond, they turned us down. I mean, like played us. I mean, we're... <laughs> To whom they concern, hey, sir, this is us, played us, never responded. And then he basically, he basically called us back eventually and said, hey, call this guy, which is his brother. His brother said, yeah, I, you know, typically we don't, we don't deal with people that don't, don't have an experience. And then, and so we had to figure out you know, another way. And that's luckily, you know, very fortunate that we found uh, other financing. Uh, however, now that's actually the, the people that have our financing our deal that we're looking for now. So, you know, everything came full circle, but because we have the experience now for that. So you hit it on the head too. If if you are looking for that, you know, hard money route, and you need that experience, partner with someone that's been doing it. You know, someone else has that three, four under the belt. Then at least you could ping on them for any questions. You could put their name on the on the deal as well. And going back to the JV, of course, the joint venture. Now you could uh, you could form it that way, so you could prove for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I see yeah, a good way to say it. Yeah. So get continuing with the with the with putting the dollars to it. So now you've identify the property, you've identified the rehab costs, you go and get the loan, you put your 20% down. And I, and again, some people would say, well, I don't even have 20,000 to put yeah. down on it. That's when you can, you can mix it up. You can say, I'll get a hard money loan for a hundred thousand. I still need 20 K to put down. Right. I can go get private money. So mm -hmm. I can say, you can go to your, your people. You can say, mom, I need $5,000 mm -hmm. brother. I need $5,000. So then you get the $20,000 to give to the hard money lender. Yeah. They'll give you the hundred thousand for, for the project. Yeah. And you didn't really have to use any of your money. You've, you've creatively you put it together. It. Yep. You, fact, you, fact. you leverage your, your connections, right? So you, uh, you put the down payment down, you lock the house up, you identify the rehab costs, you start the project. And let's say the first thing you say is, all right, I got to redo this kitchen. How you were saying the draw process, you'll, mm -hmm. you will go and do the kitchen first. Right. So you'll get the contractor, right. you'll say, let's do this kitchen. You'll pay the contractor for the kitchen. Then the hard money lender will send somebody out to say, is this kitchen good? Did they do right. it to the proper specifications? Did they actually do the work? If they come out, they say, yeah, they did the work. They'll give you the money back. So you're getting reimbursed, reimbursed for with the money. They're not giving you a hundred thousand dollar check to say, go right. buy it, go renovate it. And once you're done, let us know. Right. right. They say, go do the work. Once we verify you've done the work, we'll give you the money back. Right. So you go through a process of, of draws, which they, every time they give you money, they charge you a fee. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And, and then, and then at the, once you're done with all that, at the end of the project, you'll say, all right, well, I've done everything. I borrowed the money. Let's put it on the market. Let's say you sell it for the $150,000. Once you sell it, you'll give the hard money lender and the private lenders their money back. You'll pay some fees as well. And then whatever you have left is your profit. That's your profit. Yep. Yep. Exactly all right. right. But, but, all right. So did we, did we get into uh, and one thing I didn't know, the guy in yeah. Richmond was an accountant, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to reach yeah, out yeah, to him and try I to. Think, <laughs> try I think I think I shot you his name. 
Yeah, yeah, he did. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's he's good people. He's good people. Yeah. But but all right. So we we kind of talked about how you all are financing, right? You're you're using this private lender. Yeah, using a private lender. Uh, I, I'll break that deal a little bit down, and we're very fortunate. Like I, when I when I say we didn't know the angst behind hard money until we started talking to our developers, our contractors. There's two mm-hmm. contractors, three contractors that that we use, um, uh, and, and two of them use hard money loans. Um, and when we when we told them the the structure of how the payments are, like I mean, just blown away. So I I don't I don't I don't take that for granted. So we're in a very fortunate position. So um, at the end of the day, so what happens with our current deal, uh, like I said, this is, this is why I, I prefer um, private money because it's a little bit more flexible. Um, there's, there's no inspections. There's no um, closing cost fees for, for us um, financing the deal in, in, its, in its entirety. I mean, from purchase to closing costs to um, rehab, um, and it's not even on a draw basis. Basically, hey, we need X, Y, Z for this deal, mm. an account that we all that we all share with my business partner and him share, and we just pay accordingly. Now, every week we do do a little write up on, hey, this is what was accomplished this week. Not, it's not even a, it's just an email and or a text. Hey, this mm. was accomplished over the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is what we look like going forward. Kind of is our you know our approach. This is what the market is saying right now, and this is kind of what our price point is going to be. You know, as as we're we're moving forward. So at the end of the day, I mean, it's 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 a, it's a win for for us. And then at the end of it, after we split our profit, he takes uh fifty percent, and we take the remaining fifty percent. That sounds like a lot. I know people are like fifty percent, but you have to understand that we're not paying any fees moving it's forward. It's not your money. Yeah, like we're we're not <laughs> we're we're not paying anything. And I'm I'm not you know I'm not making light of it because we're in a very blessed situation. But it's I mean it's it's a it's it's a win. So yeah. we almost lost that deal. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Right, right. Like all that, all that crap. But, right. and I, I think that's a, I think that's a good point too. Like, let's say, let's say you find a deal that you're going to make $50,000 on, you borrow all the money and your lender says, I need 75% of the profits. Right. So you, you made $50,000. They want 75%. So maybe you get to keep $10,000. Yeah. Like, but, None of that was your money in the first place. I'll, I'll made, take five thousand. Yeah. Right, you made you made ten G's off of hey, yeah. let me borrow your money and put some work in. All right, facts, facts. Yeah, and 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 you and I, I don't know where question is going to lead to, but I think it's a good point to to say. And I, I kind of rolled everything up in the story. There's a lot of people with with money out there, a lot of people, and you'll be surprised where those people are. If you're vocal and you start talking about it, I, I give an example. Bigger pockets just always talk about when, hey, this is how I find my deals. And I used to think, yo, these people are crazy. One, you know, is, is blue hair, you know, or a blonde hair, blue eyed girl, you know, so I went to the gym and all of a sudden this guy said he'll give me a million dollars. I'm like, all right, well, not, I can't, I can't do that. So, you know, so I look at those situations, but like, I, but they did break down something. It's like, yo, when you put it out there in the atmosphere, it will come through. So there's a lot of people out there with money. And I, I'm talking about any marketplace, Hampton Roads. I see a lot of people in DC uh, right now, a lot of people with money, but they don't know how to earn all that money or they don't have the time to invest it. So you come up with a plan of saying, hey, this is what we'll do for you moving forward. And it makes sense. The numbers make sense people will finance those deals. And that's exactly what happened with, with the situation that we're in now. Just being vocal, had money, didn't have time to really be out there, you know, you know, boots on ground, investigating, doing all the research, inspections, and yada, yada, yada. Said, hey, we'll make that easy for you. We'll do the lifting for you. And just at the end of it, you know, you take 50%. So, yeah. so getting, getting into the numbers, um, one of the deals we did on Lens Avenue, which was a really good one, uh, this kind of I'm saying the story because it's kind of show you kind of just the nature of of you know the entry point. So the property was listed at 55. Um, we had to go 30k over in order to secure it. So mm-hmm. we we got it around like 86 more. It was it's just what it is. Yeah. So we got it at 86,000. We probably put in around 45, right? 45,000. Uh, we sold it 189. The first deal fell out. Uh, people walked away from it. Uh, came back in, another deal came in like the day, the same day or the, the next day. So they liked it in that 189. So here we go, we have a, a spread. Uh, I think total invested around the, the 131 mark, if my numbers are correct. Mm-hmm. And then 132 maybe. And then um, pay the, uh, got on the contract at 189. Uh, we had to pay 6% in fees and things like that. Not, not lender fees, just fees period. So you got to pay the other agent, 
Most people are looking for 3% towards closing costs and, and stuff like that. Uh, and just miscellaneous things too. Uh, I mean, I think we cashed out around like 45 and then we split 40, 43, 45, 45 something like that. Uh, split 50 with him and then we took our, you know, our, our 27 at that point, 22.5 and split 50, 50 ways or 50% down the road. Mm. Can't, can't beat that. And I'm exactly. saying that because there's other deals um, that people are making 40, 50 on flips and, and, and that's, that's sexy. I get that. But they're also paying a lot more fees and there's a lot more headaches when you're going down that road, you know, especially dealing with hard money lenders. So in our situation, hey, if, I, if, if I make my, my 12 or my whatever the case is and I don't have to go through that, I'll take that all day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, I think while we, well, maybe I, well, while it sounds easy to borrow money from somebody, uh, I think it's important to say that, that you're comfortable borrowing money from people and if anybody's borrowing money from people, you should be very assured that you're going to give get the people their money back and the interest yeah. that you borrowed on the money. It's not, yeah. I'm going to go borrow money all willy nilly because I want to take this long shot. It's, I truly believe I have a good deal here. I've been conservative in anal analyzing the deal. I am almost certain that I'm going to get my money back. I know yeah. there's risk, um, but at, at bare bottom, the person that I borrowed the money from is going to get their money back. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right. So let's, let's talk about uh, establishing a, a, a team. How do, you, how do you get that agent? You know, how, how are you getting your contractors? How's, how's the, the team process work? So I, I, I'll speak to the agent side of the house. Um, just anyone that is looking for an agent, like interview that person. Like honestly, interview that person, whatever marketplace you're, you're in. And I, I keep saying marketplace because every market is different. So if you're in the Richmond area, if you're in the DC area, even even within those areas, you have, you still have to hyper focus on different subdivisions because everything has its own culture, their own thing about it, right? Um, so you, you study those, like interview those people and ask them, like you know, have they ever dealt with uh, an investor before? Um, like what does that look like? What's their their, their work schedule? Um, um, uh, there's success rates, right? You know, how, how many lessons are they dealing with uh, and, and stuff like that. Just like really interview those people and find out exactly they work with investors. Because working with an investor is it's completely different than working with someone that's looking for a traditional house. The languages are completely different. The way you negotiate the contracts are completely different. Um, there's, there's things that I do on contracts, you know, any, any house that we've, you know, we looked at, we try to get, or any investor, you know, looking at, I, I make sure that we can always pull out anytime we need to and still get our monies back regardless. It just, just it's key phrases you got to put in the contract so you are protected. So it's, it's those little things that make sure that you're protected along the way. Um, uh, contractors, that's, that's probably the hardest one, man. It's, it's, not, it's not a black and white answer when it comes to contractors and, and interviewing contractors. Uh, we, like I said, I, I've, been, I've been burned by someone who I thought was like my mentor in the game. Mm -hmm. And in our last deal, man, I lost, I lost my partner and I, we lost some good cash. Because I, you know, I thought he had our best foot forward. Didn't know that he was basically like just just ringing us, like just taking our money, man. So very unfortunate situation. And this is this is someone that I worked I worked with for years, years, years. Yeah. So and when it comes to contractors, man, it's, it's tough. But through that, you know, um, we we have we have now the three that I just mentioned the contractors. I, I trust them from here to, to the moon like they're they're solid guys they came in and saved us when we needed it i mean i, I refer them for for any project whether it's small or big i refer them so when it comes to vetting uh the thing is i, I will definitely look at the high level things make sure they're licensed um um look at the roller deck see how many how many flips have they've done in the, like the resume excuse me like the resume see how many houses they they've done everything is artifact now so you can look at you know zillow hey show me pull some some of your properties let me see the look of it if they have deals going on at the same time Go to that property, let them walk you through the deal and, and see what they were doing on that, on that home, mm -hmm. right? And you don't have to know everything, just get a good feel for them. I have, literally have them walk you through the properties that they're working on. Um, if they have uh, client sales that they, they worked with in the past, going back to the resume, call those people up. Hey, what, what's your experience with this person? Um, you know, how, how long have you known him? How did you vet him? And stuff like that. It's, it's literally like, a, like an interview like you would for a regular nine to five job. You know, you yeah. verify the references, look at their, uh, their work to make sure that they're good and, and they do it like that. Yeah. But 
Uh, what about the financing side? How do I find a lender or a hard money lender or a private lender? Yeah, man, I, I'll be honest, they're all over the place. I mean, you could literally do a Google search right now and everyone is doing hard money lenders. Um, so I, I, I go private, private, like I said, just be vocal. You know, anytime you're talking about it, go to meetups. Um, you know, it's always a real estate meetup going on somewhere. And you'll, all, you'll, you'll meet a lot of people with money who are just trying to, you know, figure out how to diversify, how to invest and stuff like that. So that's, that's the private route. Um, just go to meetups and, and interact with people. Um, yeah. As far as the um, uh, hard money, I, like literally you could do a Google search right now. And, and, and everyone now, you can say, hey, shoot me your term sheets so you can compare apples to apples. Like, I mean, it's, that's just, it's, it's, everyone is doing it right now. The only thing I will say though, well, one thing we are learning because of COVID, and this is specifically driven by COVID, that hard, a lot of hard money lenders are, aren't working in key places anymore. Um, I know, shoot, the one that you were looking at, uh, they, they stopped in Georgia or was it in Virginia? I want to say they were up in South Carolina, but it's definitely not Virginia because they pulled my joint. That's like right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so while, while you were doing that, I was looking at uh, another hard money uh, route, um, AP Capital. AP Capital is one that I was looking at. They're actually based out of, out of Philly. Um, and they used to always, always, you know, advertise, advertise, advertise. Uh, but because of COVID, they're not even doing uh, financing anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, 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 you know, just Google search who was out there, ask the questions, are you, are you, are you uh, investing in these key areas, ask them about their terms. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's legit, like a Google search. Hard money lenders are all over the place right now. Yeah, okay. But, but, all right, so let, let's, um, let's switch gears into how, how do you find deals? How do, how do you like to find deals? And then, I guess, give a, give a couple options of, of how folks can find deals, whether that's the MLS or meetups or, you know, wholesalers, driving for dollars, whatever it is. Facts, facts. All the above. So the MLS uh, is kind of what, you know, realtors use whenever they're going to their, to their, um, um, uh, their source of, of inventory. Uh, not everyone has access to that. So, but you can talk to a realtor, say, hey, you know, put me on um, um, uh, email chain. Let me know what's going on within this criteria. I want all the properties within this area that meet the specifications. Shoot me emails, uh, meetups, uh, lead locally. I'm speaking directly for the people who live in Hampton Roads and, and um, yeah, in Hampton Roads. Uh, we got Trig, which is the Tidewater Real Estate Investment Group, and also Preya, which is on the peninsula. It's the Peninsula Real Estate Investment Group. Uh, association, excuse me, and uh, it's, it's nothing but a collection of investors, whether they hold inventory or they're financing deals, they all get together. Uh, in fact, they're, they're I, I think, I know Trig is, I don't know about Prey, but Trig is virtual now. Like they're doing Zoom yeah. calls, you know, just like we're sitting here right now. Now they're doing everything on, on Zoom because of, because of the climate and, and everything that's going on right now. Yeah. Um, one thing about inventory, you got to be, you got to be pretty crafty right now. You got to be pretty crafty. Um, so we've been looking at wholesalers. So, um, so any, anytime you see those signs that say, Hey, we buy houses for cash, uh, you know, as is and stuff like that, those yellow signs you see all over the place, call mm -hmm. them, say, Hey, I mean, like call them up and say, Hey, look, I'm looking for some properties, add me to your distribution list. So that's another one that, that you could do. So we, we've been doing that. Um, we've been doing direct mailers. So if I go to a, an area that I say, Hey, there's some potential here. I'm writing down their addresses. I'm looking at the tax records on them, getting the physical address to where the owners are, and I'm sending them a, a, a letter. Like that's, that's, that's where it is right now, sending them a letter. Um, what, what else is going on? I actually, I wrote it down because I, I, I wanted the, oh, foreclosures. Foreclosures right now are real scarce um, because of COVID and because of CARE Act, and you know, people are getting a grace period now, so they're not really going to foreclosure, which is a good thing. But they used to be like the, you know, the, the one place you are guaranteed to find something that looked good. Right now, inventory is, is, is so low right now. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty tough. So foreclosures, you know, um, they have it on apps now where you can go to Home Path, download the app. You can look in your area to see what's going on. Uh, HUD Home Store is another one you could download and kind of see what's going on in your area. Um, what's the other place? Task the link with us. We actually started doing that. Uh, so we looked at the one in, in New Pernus in Hampton. So you go down to the city and tell them you're looking for all the, the houses that are um, uh, delinquent on the taxes and you got to pay for it. I know in Hampton Roads, uh, well not Hampton Roads, but specifically Hampton and New Pernus is $30 and you'll get the address and you'll get the um, person's information, um, the name, 
and then you could you could shoot them an email or shoot them a, a letter saying hey you're interested in that property so yeah it, it's, it's it's taking a little bit more lifting now because of everything that's going on yeah, yeah it's pretty pretty tough okay but yeah. so when um all right so let's say i got my team together i got my financing together i'm out searching for deals um, do you have a, a certain criteria when you're looking for deals and, and do you have like a, I don't know, maybe a measurement or, or something that when you see a deal, you know, I, right, this is a deal that I want to pursue. Yeah. 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 So um, outside of what we talked about already, as far as like um, uh, location and, you know, three bedroom stuff like that, outside of those things, we like to go in there. We, we just say, yo, we, we want to make sure that our entry rate or our sale price is at least 100K over the entry rate. And it, what, it bo- what it boils down to is basically making sure we're not invested between like 65 and 75% of the ARV that have to repair value. So um, that, going back to that, that scenario on the, the, the property on lens. So we had to go in at 86, uh, put in about 45. If my numbers are right, we're on the 132 mark. We sold it at 189. So the seven, I think it was 70% of the ARV, that 189 was around the 131, 131,000. So we felt good with that. So we make sure when we're going in any deal that we're not breaking that plane and make sure there's enough wiggle room to where we're still profitable at the end of the day after doing our splits and everything. But that's, that's our model because we're not paying the fees that most people are paying with hard money loans. Mm-hmm. So of course, with that more fees, you might have to adjust down and kind of figure out exactly what makes sense for you. But in our, in our game, we make sure that we're not above the 70% of the ARV, the after repair value for that person. Yeah. So that's, that's one part of it. Uh, configuration, of course, in the property. One thing about it, it one, three things that always sells homes. I don't care where you are. It's always the kitchen, the master, and just the layout, right? And when I say the master, that's including the bathroom, the ensuite, and stuff like that. But that kitchen got to be dope. The, the house has to have a good flow to it. Open floor plan, of course, is, is where everyone is right now. And then that master, as long as the people buying the house have a good master, then they're, then they're, they're content, you know? But, um, can you break down ARV a little bit? Yeah. yeah. So ARV is the after repair value. So if I, if I buy a property right now, so if I, a way I could compare it to that's the, the, the retail price of a home, right? So after I buy a property at a discounted rate, right? Or I bought it, whether I'm working with a wholesaler or it doesn't matter where you get the property from, I'm buying it, you know, pre construction construction that's kind of like the wholesale price of it after I put the work into that home and I put equity into that home and then after that the assessed value after my repairs are done is what they call the ARV so I get my property I put some some work into it I'm, I'm beautifying the place I'm adding value to the place so my after repair value is increased because of the work that I've done to that property good and how do you um how do you find out what the after repair value is? So let's say I have a a house that I can get for $50,000. You know, I estimate that I'm going to need $25,000 in work. How do I know what the value, how do I estimate what the value is going to be after I make the repairs? So a good way to do that, if if you want it like the official way, run CMAs on a property, which are your your comps. Um, So get an agent to run comps on the home. And what you're looking for is something that's within the same specification specifications as that home, right? So I'm looking at something within a certain range on the square footage of the home. I'm looking at something with the same amount of bedrooms. I'm looking at something with the same amount of uh, footprint. I'm looking at something for the same amount of uh, bathrooms. So what, what I mean by that is if I buy a house that is a three bedroom, I'm not going to compare that to a home that's five bedrooms, right? So if I have a, I bought a home that I'm, uh, I'm I'm flipping and I got it for two bathrooms, it's hard for me to compare this to a home with four bathrooms, right? It just it just it doesn't line up. So what yeah. you're doing is really looking at what's going on in that immediate area. I, I like to look at you know properties that you know have sold over like the last maybe six months. Now I might even dial in a little bit more, maybe look at the last three months mm-hmm. um, to see what's on the market currently and kind of see exactly how those those shape up against my property after I do the work to it, and also what has sold over the last couple of months. Because what has sold is going to be your, your record, right? So yeah. whenever they do appraisal, they do the, the ARV on your property, it's not going to be what's on the market. It's going to be what has sold in that immediate area. And the reason why I say that is because if you have a property that's been on the market and like comps look good, like compared to your property, and it's been on the market for over 
for six months, seven months, eight months, it's a hard compare. There's something wrong with that home. It, it's yeah. either overvalued, overpriced, or there's something crazy going on with this. So you have to look at what's going on uh, for the ones that have sold. Uh, and then, of course, you do a radius around your property, you know, half a mile or, or a quarter of a mile. Is basically yeah. What I do. Right, yeah. Right. yeah, so finding the, finding the ARV is, is really finding comparable properties. Um, so actually this morning, I was um, considering uh, refinancing the, the home we live in. So I was like, all right, let me, let me see what, what the value of my property might be. So I, I first started with, um, I bought the home for 175 right? And then I looked at, all right, the house down the street, three bedroom, two and a half bath, built in 1960, sold for 184. Another one down the street, three bedroom, two and a half bath, built in 1970, uh, similar quality rehab, all that stuff, sold for 190, right? And then I look at a couple other houses that are similar to mine, and they're selling for 190, 200,000. That's when you estimate, all right, my... The, so let's say I bought this house and then there's a house next to mine that, that needs some good repairs. Yeah. So when I'm looking at that house and saying, oh, I can buy this house for 50,000, I got to put 50 into it. Now I'm saying, what do I think I can sell it for? Well, if I bought my house that's right next door to it for 175 and then four other houses on the same street sold for 180, 195, then I can estimate that at the least, I'm probably going to get 175 for this house that I'm fixing up. If it's the same square footage, same bedroom, bathroom, same footprint, same quality, uh, similar age, and obviously same location because it's right next door. So what you're really trying to do is find something similar to say, all right, what do I think I can get for this property after I put the work in? Exactly, exactly. And you, you said something that triggered another thought. So this is going back to the financing of it. Uh, like if you want to, if you have a deal, you want to try to find ways to finance it. Um, a HELOC. So I'm actually considering doing that with my property. So my house that I'm, I'm sitting in now, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of good equity in the home. So I'm, I'm thinking about doing a HELOC on it, which is the uh, home equity line of credit. Uh, and the reason I like the HELOCs is because the current rates right now are so low. Um, and so what that does is say, say, for instance, I, I use arbitrary numbers, I bought the house for a hundred, um, or what's left on my home is a hundred. Um, uh, my, um, assessed value on the property, my appraised value in the property say it's 150, right? So what the loan will allow me to do is do 80% and if they're getting strict, they're getting more strict with the numbers now, but the last numbers I saw at Langley was 80%. So 80% of the uh, loan to value ratio. So basically 80% of my 150 where it, where it assessed that minus what I owe wanted a hundred, 80% mm-hmm. of the 50 K uh, gives me a 40,000. So my um, HELOC I get, I could get for 40 um, K and the reason I like the Helix is because you don't pay into it until you actually use it. So it just kind of sits there, yeah. like in the account. And the only way you actually start paying it, and I'm paying the, uh, the fees on it, is if you actually tap into it. So I'm looking at doing that for, for a couple of, um, uh, for a property, not, not for a flip, but for a, um, a rental. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's, that's something else. So if you own right now and you got some equity in there, that's the way you can pull out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all about finding the money to kind of piggyback off that. So our, our first rental, I took a loan from my 401k to do a small $5,000 rehab after we bought the property and then just put the money back into the 401k after we were done with the rehab. Um, I just got a, uh, a uh, personal, personal line of credit through my bank for $35,000. Um, yeah. So something I've been... Uh, trying to work with you with is finding a lower cost property that we could possibly buy for 15, 20,000, put 15, 20,000 into it, and then refinance that, get my money back from that personal line of credit and, and rock like that. So I, I think that's important that you just got to find the money. There's money places. You just got to get creative. Yeah. You got to find the money. We got time for for another example. I don't know how, yeah, yeah, yeah. how much you got. Hey, we on, um, we on, we on your time, man. Oh man! Hey, look. Let me tell y'all something. I, I'm forewarning y'all. I run a podcast and I talk a lot. All right, so y'all might want to exit now. Go use the bathroom. Come back. But nah. But um, I I just want to give y'all a game. So like, whatever I have, I'm not an expert. But like, whatever I know, I I'm I, I like to whatever. I, I want to be uh be a um uh, a resource for everyone. Uh, so a deal, a deal that we're looking at right now. Uh, that that I was doing that I walked away from. You mentioned something. 
Um, it's, it's kind of the long game, you know what I mean? Um, so there's a deal I was looking at in Hampton, and you, you said lower price point. So there's a home I was looking at in, uh, in New Peru, excuse me. Um, at the end of the day, I, I was trying to get it around the, the 60K mark. Uh, I already walked through with a contractor all in. I probably would have been around the 15K mark. So all in, I'm at, I'm at uh, 75, uh, 75,000, right? So what, what uh, some banks allow you to do, uh, mortgage companies, excuse me, not all banks, but mortgage companies allow you to do is actually finance the purchase of the home and also finance the rehab on the home. So I'm not talking about like a two or 3K loan. I know I've been talking a lot about that on IG, but I'm not talking about a two or 3K loan. I'm talking about like an investment property. Mm -hmm. So what I was going to do is actually pay 20% down on it. So I would have paid 14,000 on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the numbers made sense. I was going to rent it out in the whole nine. Uh, I would have been like maybe 550 cash flow positive. But um, what I wanted to do is at the end of it, in order for me to, I was either going to write refinance on it and pull out the equity. So that's one way I could have done it uh, to get more, more cash for another property or just sell it after a year. So you're able to do that after the year. So it's not flipping per se, what we know is flipping as far as, hey, let me buy this, sell it within four months and so on and so forth. But it's something long game. So if you have the 401k, you have cash heavy, you could get a property, you know, we're, we're talking about the new for news marketplace right now. Cause new for mm -hmm. news, you can get a property right now for 40 K and right. put in 25 and it's a brand new home. Right. So 40 K 25 K my down payment on it to secure it. I to secure it. I do the 20%. Not only am I getting the property, but I'm also financing the rehab, the repairs for that property. So mm -hmm. my equity is already built in and I didn't have to pay out of cash for the entire repairs for it. And then, you know, sell it in the year or just rent it up. Hey, baby. Yep. Okay. Facts. Baby. Facts. Yeah. You see Mr. King? Okay. Uh, criteria for searching for deals, pursuing a deal in their contract. All right. So let's, maybe let's talk about estimating rehab a little bit. Okay. So, so Go ahead, my bed, you. No, no, I was, I was going to say, let's say I, I found the property. Um, how do I, I found the property. Of course, I want to go look at the property because I, I can't, it, it's kind of, you got to work backwards into it, right? So when you see a property, you don't just say, oh, I can buy this for $50,000. You got to say, all right, let me go into the property so I can see how much I'm going to have to put into the rehab so I know how much I can buy it for. So yeah. if I think I can sell it for $100,000, but I have to put $40,000 into it, the more I have to put into it, the, the more I'm going to lower my entry cost, right? right? So how do, how do people uh, start estimating what they think they're going to have to do to the property? Uh, man, so I, I'm, I'm, I have a little leverage here because I've done it before and I've worked with a lot of investors. So it, it won't be fair for me to like give you a template. But I, I, I'll tell you like this, um, you know, some of your, your, your big items, like your main systems, right? So I'll break it down your systems and also the areas of the home. So the main areas want to be like your HVAC. Any property that we've ever flipped, we've had to gut the entire thing. And that, that, was, just, that was just part of it. Mm -hmm. So all new electrical, all new plumbing, um, HVAC, all your mechanics, uh, mechanicals or HVAC, everything, uh, even to the point where you had to put in new ductwork. So those are three main items that are, are pretty, pretty massive. And the biggest house we've done was about 1,900 square feet, right? So mm -hmm. I'm saying that because that kind of gives you, I'm, I'm, I'll try to put some numbers to it and you could use that as a, as a comp uh, if you can. So about 1,900 square feet, um, total plumbing, total um, uh, electrical, electrical, I think it was about maybe 3,800 uh my safe round of the four thousand total electrical throughout the entire household um and then i mean from start to finish rough ends and also even buttoning up everything um plumbing you're looking about around about 4500 hvac it's a, it's a big ticket item hvac will probably cost you around like 65 mind you i'm using numbers that are based on a 1900 square foot house so i don't know what you know house you're looking at but that's based on those numbers yeah. um so those are your, your big items right there and then for the areas that cost a lot of money uh, would be your kitchen, of course. You want to do some really good work on the kitchen. And I'm not talking about, you don't need expensive marble and things like that, but a uh, typical kitchen, granite, um, nice flooring, cabinets, uh, can lights, uh, and, and things you see in a nice home that you, that you like, you know, probably cost you around the, you know, the 65, 7K mark. 
Uh, and then, of course, the master bathroom. Um, and you, master bathroom, you, it's up to your imagination, really. You, know, you can put some money in there. But um, the most we ever spent was probably around like 4500 on a master bedroom or a bathroom. Yeah. So, so working backward, you kind of look at it like, yo, these are the main items, the big items that we're going to be, be, be spending on. Uh, and even with that being said, the biggest deal that we've, we've ever done, uh, like that, the one in Lens, I use that as a good example. We spent 4500 on it, but that was, a, that was knocking down walls, new HVAC, plumbing, electrical, uh, reconfiguring some of the, the, the areas in the home. So, I mean, that's 45000 New roof, new siding. We did hardy plank siding on the outside exterior, which is pretty pricey. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay. But, and, and I think something else to mention is that might sound intimidating that I got to figure out how much it's going to cost to get plumbing done and the HVAC, F, F the property needs any of that. You yeah. could find a property that needs paint and a floor, right? And you don't. Right. Right. Um, but I, I think the good thing about that is you can find a contractor that you trust that specializes and doing flips, this is all they do. This is what they do for a living. And you can just say, yo, I'll give you $50, right? Come out to the property, give me an estimate. Um, you know, if the estimate's good, I get the property, you do good work, then we'll continue to work together, right? So I, I think with real estate, one of the big things for me is outsourcing professionals, right? I, all I have to do is find the person that's gonna finance it. They're gonna do everything else. Yeah. My agent's gonna help me find and close the deal. My contractor is going to help me estimate the rehab, do all the rehab work. And as long as I trust them, right, all I have to do is kind of manage the process or, or say yes or no to any big, big things that are going wrong. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's important that, and, and this is what we do. If we find a property, you know, we say, all right, Jay, let's, let's go hit the property. Let's walk it. Let's find out what it's going to cost us to rehab it. And then at that point, we either say, all right, let's put an offer in here or this is too much rehab. The numbers don't make sense. On to yeah. the next one. Yeah. Better answer. Yeah. Outsource it. Get with a contractor, walk it, get a couple quotes, get two or three quotes, compare them, uh, make sure whatever quote they give you, you put a buffer in there, at least like 10% because everything always, something always happens. Right. So, yeah. And, the, and really, the more you do it, the more you get familiar with it. Yeah. So then you don't have to do the $50 thing every time. Yeah. You can be looking on the internet and see the pictures and say, oh, that, that looks dark right there. That might be a leak in the, in, the, in the joint. The AC outside looks really rusted. So you can start that, that kitchen is going to cost me roughly 4000 So yeah. the more you do it, the more you start getting better at, at finding these things and being able to do some more stuff yourself. Yeah. But. All right. So you want to you want to walk us through a, a certain deal and just tell us the numbers, you know, what you bought it for, what you sold it for, what the rehab was, any lessons learned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I keep this one short. Um, I'll, I'll move on to the last deal that we did because I think there's a lot of lessons in that one. Um, so we got the property again. We had to go 30K over. We secured it at 89. That property we put in close to about man, if I remember correctly, had to be around the, oh man, 80, 90 mark. Uh, shouldn't have been. You know, that's us working with a contractor that, that did us pretty dirty. Um, we lost money on that deal, but um, the lesson learned from there, well, let me go through the numbers and I get into the lessons learned. So we got it at 89. He um, uh, probably put in close to like 90 into it. That probably was a big one. Uh, we, at one point, you just saw the shell of the home. When you walked in, all your footings were exposed. So like you were stepping on dirt when you walked in there. Like everything had to be done in there. We had to reconfigure the, the upstairs. Uh, we did that twice, over, uh, the upstairs, how that was configured. The stairs that led to the upstairs, we couldn't get it grandfathered in. So we had to rip that down and put up uh, new stairs. It was just a cluster, man. But um, at the end of the day, uh, we put it on the market. The first, my first mistake, let me get into some mistakes now. My first mistake is that we just came off of a deal. We just made 45000 So I'm, I'm hype. I'm, my head is big. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, we about to get this cash, baby. I'm about to retire. So I put it on the market for, for uh, 250 My problem was is that I, I was so emotionally attached to it. I was comparing it to new construction. No bueno. Never do that. Uh, new construction in the area was going for 280. They were sitting on the market for a long time, so I figured, yo, our house is nicer than theirs, you know. But hey, let's, let's just knock it down 30k. So we put it on at 250, and the market does not lie. 
every 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 you know couple of weeks we had to break it down break it down break it down yada 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 to the point where we sold it at two at 224 mm. we took an l on that one we took an yeah. l even even in the reason why we took an l we still would have been positive in our cash we still would have been profitable but what we did was we we made a uh uh intentional decision um, that we wanted, you made this comment earlier, that we wanted to make sure that our lender, the person who was financing our deals, that he saw a bigger return. Mm. No one made money in that deal. And that this goes back to the, the contractors that we used that came in to save the day, the two contractors, like to this day, like they, they are my guys because they came in and saved us from the other contract that was taking money from us. And they, they didn't make any money on it either. Like they're legit just on the strength of our, our friendship. They're helping us out. Mm -hmm. um, my partner and I didn't make any money, but we said what we're going to do is make sure that any any monies that we have coming in here that's profitable, we're going to give it to our investor just so he knows that, look, we're not selfish guys. It's not about us. It's about the big picture. So and it, it worked out because now he wants to you know do some more deals. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so we, we gave him all the profit, man. He and I, we, I think we lost, I don't know, my, my 16K, 17K maybe. Mm -hmm. So I mean, just part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um I think there's two key th things there, man. So one is you're still here, right? You not <laughs> right? You not um you not down and out. You know, uh, of course, fortunate that you were able to get through the situation. But I think I think what stops a lot of us is that we're afraid to lose money, not understanding that you know people will spend you know, $150,000 on an education that they may or may not use. Yeah. But, you know, losing, losing $16,000, you know, on a flip, even though you don't want to, uh, I'm sure you got some education. I'm sure you got some lessons learned on the joint. So, I mean, you got, sometimes you got to pay the cost to be the boss and it's not, yeah. a, I think sometimes we work ourselves up in that if we, if we lose a dollar, we're going to be filing bankruptcy and starving and all that stuff. So I think number one is that you're still here. And number two is was kind of kind of going to be one of my one of my last questions was hidden costs. So when you say when you say you bought it for eighty nine, you put eighty to ninety in it. Um, you know, just off the blinds eye view, it sounds like you're only in the property for like one hundred eighty thousand. You sold it for you know about two thirty. So it sounds like you made money on the deal. But yeah. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that there are what HG. HGTV doesn't show you right. <laughs> is it's not just what you bought it minus the rehab equals what you're going to make it. There's financing costs, there's closing costs, there's agents, there's holding costs. So can you talk about like some of the, some of the fees or expenses that people don't see or don't really look at when they're doing a flip? Yeah, definitely. So we, we already talked about the, the fees that you pay anytime you're making a, a, a draw, right? Mm -hmm. We already talked about the down payment. Um, you already talked about, we didn't really get into the materials. Materials uh, prices fluctuate uh, every season based on what's, what's in demand and things like that. So that's an added cost to, to look at. Uh, labor costs for your contractors, that also elevates based on who you're using, right? So there's some some things that you have to factor in. Um, your fees that you're paying, your hard money lender, of course, that's another cost. The un So we already discussed that. The, the fees that you don't really look at are uh, when you sell a property. When you sell a property, at least 10% of that ARV amount going back to the after repair value of it is going towards fees. And that's not even uh, lender, not even, uh, yeah, it's not even lender fees. That's 3% that you're going to pay your agent that you're using. Another 3% that you're going to be using for the other person's lender, um, uh, excuse me, agent. So that's the seller's, the buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. um, and then 3% for um, a person looking at closing cost assistance. So closing cost assistance is really towards like their settlement fees, title fees, and things like that. Three percent is 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 kind of standard right now, to be honest with you. And you might mess around and get a VA buyer who is someone as a veteran, you know, either past or present, you know, in the military. They could ask up to eleven percent for closing costs. Mm -hmm. So if you got a property that's been in the market for a long time and you're, you know, kind of like God, Lee, I'm about to come off another <laughs> another eleven percent just on his fees or yeah. her fees. Yeah, those are, those are fees that you don't look at. So going back to that example, put on the market for 230, off the bat, 10% is going towards fees. So that's not even profit. That's just straight fees. Mm. So yeah, so that's what, 23,000 that you can't even account for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I, we were looking at a property one day and I was, I was running the numbers in my head and I came up with a number 
and you was like, I want to say like the, the, the sell, the sell price of the ARV was like 200,000 on a property. Mm -hmm. And I came up with a number and you was like, so what about the other 20,000 and like fees? I was like, ah, uh, so yeah, I don't know about that. I wasn't even thinking about that 20 K this is not even going to be my profit. So I, I think that's important for, for folks to see that it's, um, and, and another thing is that it's sweet on the buying side, like the buying <laughs> side, you can ask for their assistance, you know, the seller pays for both the agents, you can negotiate all that. But when you, when you selling, it ain't, it ain't so sweet on the seller yeah. side. You got some fees coming there. Straight up, straight up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so kind of, kind of wrapping up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, where can where can people learn? What what are some of the resources you have used to learn? Um, what, what are some of the best ways people can continue to educate themselves? Definitely, man. Talk talk to any agent. Be vocal. Talk to contractors. One thing you learn: contractors love to share their stories. Um, go to YouTube if you're more so in like the, in the traditional route. Uh, go to YouTube. Read read literature. Um, uh, a lot of books out there about about investing. Um, uh, a lot of people do programs if you're into programs you know definitely do the programs that are out there uh, Than Merrill real estate guy always advertising his his uh, which which I actually looks pretty good I just I'm, I'm not gonna pay the money for it but if you want like free content <laughs> you want free content just go to YouTube go to YouTube go to these meetups that we keep talking about mm -hmm. um, there's so there I, I, I love stories because that's when you really hear about like what really happened mm -hmm. right like the real pain points so yeah. go to different meetups and talk to people uh, and kind of get their experience on it. Um, I'm here. I, I, I get free game all the time. I'm not an expert, but if I know it, I'm going to give it to you. Like, in, in facts, I, I, don't, I don't hold anything to the chest. I love sharing. So other than that, yeah, that's, I, I, I would think it's probably like the, the top places to kind of look at, look at those things. But, but, all right. And then just on, on that same note, so people going out here and getting educated, what would you say are the top three things that somebody should do right now if they heard this conversation and say, all right, I want to get into flipping? Man, that's a good question. So if you, if after this conversation, if you definitely say you want to get flipping or you want to start flipping, I would understand where you want to flip, understand that market. Um, and you, you made a good point earlier, you know, don't look at all of North Carolina and Virginia or Maryland, whoever, wherever you are listening to this, hyper-focus in an area, right? Uh, you might start with a, a general search, go to your, your city.gov, you know, if you're in Virginia Beach.gov and look at the city plans to see what's going on over the next 10 to 15 years and say, hey, there's an opportunity here. I want to focus here, hyper focus in there, kind of drive around, drive around, see what's going on. Uh, a true sign that there's action going on is new construction. If you see new construction popping up in a lot of places, this might be a good area for us, mm -hmm. right? So you look at, look at that. Um, got, I, I you could get your team in order. You can start like, you know, kind of vetting, you know, different contractors and kind of figuring out what that looks like. But before you do that, I would definitely start the, uh, the financing route. Um, get with some friends. If you plan on doing it with some friends, which I think is dope, um, you know, that adds a different layer to it as well. And you can hold, you hold each other accountable, you know, just, you know, have, have meetings, like have business meetings where you, where it's, Hey, you know, no, we're not doing FaceTime. We're actually going on zoom and record this. And these are the action plans moving forward. That's what we started doing. You know, trying to trying to like really make it a business and not a, not a, not something that's cool to talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, legit, exactly. yeah, get into it. So yeah, just vet your team, work on the financing. Information is out there. Google search for for your financing uh, deals. Um, yeah, they hit me up if you want to strategize. Hit me up. Um, like I guess I'm free game. That that and I, that's that's kind of my last question. Where can people learn more about you? Where can they contact you? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you see my, my name up there, chat with Pat. Uh, that's my hash. That's my, my handle and everything. Hit me up on IG. IG is probably my, my playground. I love IG. I so stay, stay on IG. <laughs> looking like <laughs> looking crazy up there. But uh, IG is dope. Um, I'm not big on, on Facebook, but just hit me up on IG. Direct message, whatever the case is. Yeah, I'm, I'm up there. Bet, bet. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't think we I don't think we have any questions. Uh, one question, any experience with uh, property tax sales? I, I think we kind of talked about that already. Yeah, we talked about that. I, I will add a caveat. Property tax sales, it takes a long time for that process because you, when, when you contact that individual, um, they actually have the right to, to repay back their taxes. So and I, you have to give them a year to do it. So it takes a long time to actually do that. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good tip there. 
All right. You uh, anything I missed? Um, I, nah, man. I, I I made notes just so I made sure that I was like telling everything. But other than that, man, I think the biggest thing was the financing because that's always a big hurdle. Um, getting creative on looking for your properties is always always a big thing. Um. Other than that, man, the lessons learned, I think was dope. I think I think was good, man. I appreciate you hosting me, man, for real. Hey, anytime, anytime. Yeah, I, I appreciate you for being a, a resource for me and, and really giving me the confidence to to kind of dive in the real estate and leverage your team and, and uh, your experience and all that stuff. So uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate your, your, your time all and, uh, and, and chatting with the folks. I, I think this was good. Uh, a couple people on Facebook said they got some good uh, information on it, uh, good value. Um, so now I, I appreciate you, Big Dog. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. Real talk. Hey, hit me up, and if y'all need anything at all, man, don't don't uh, don't hesitate. Hit me up. Most deaf. All right. Well, appreciate everybody for joining in. That was uh, this Saturday's conversation. Again, hit hit Pat up with any questions you have. Um, he's he's my uh, he's my agent. Um, one of my mentors in, in real estate so really experienced and he says he's not a he's not an expert but i would i i beg to differ on that so uh i appreciate you again big dog and uh everybody have a good rest of your, your saturday separation saturdays and separation saturday baby we back at it <laughs> <Most> <laughs> all right baby take it right, yes sir all right.